Welcome back, I'm Karina Garcia, and we are now joined by Oscar Pudlido. He is here with the Victoria Veterans. You are a prominent figure here in our community, and one thing that you really strive to work for is this program that we were talking about early off camera, which is the 22. Can you dive into that real quick? Well, the 22 a day has always been a, uh, it's been a, a set number that veterans have, found, they found veterans, 22 veterans a day are completing suicide, uh, be it elderly veterans, young veterans, you know, where the numbers have actually gone down. It's down to about 17 a day, but the active duty numbers have actually gone up. Mm. So we're still running around the same type of numbers, you know, 22 a day when it comes to active duty and veteran, you know, military service and the veteran community. Uh, so our, you know, our passion at the Veterans Center is to just bring awareness to it. We do, uh, we do trainings once a week on, uh, on the, uh, uh, calm. It's a counseling access to lethal means, which is getting the means of suicide out of someone's hands. If they've got a plan and the gun is involved, we try to get the gun out of the home. Mm -hmm. Pills, knives, whatever the, whatever the case may be. Uh, we do an ask training. It's uh, uh, assist, seek, and know. So we are teaching you how to ask someone or, and be comfortable with the question, are you thinking about suicide? And know what to do when they say yes. Mm. You know, and if they say no, Maybe if you don't believe it, how to try to get it out of them a little bit more that maybe it is yes. Really dealing with these delicate issues right. at these it's, times. It's, it's, and people have a misconception that if you bring up suicide, you're giving them the idea of suicide, and that's not the case. You know, if you're thinking about suicide, you're thinking about suicide. It's like one in five people actually will have thoughts of suicide. May not have a plan, may not ever follow through with it, but there's a thought of, man, I'd be better off not waking up in the morning. Mm -hmm. And that's a thought of suicide. You know, it's not necessarily, uh, like I said, it's not planned, it's not... You know, it hasn't been thought out much. You know, driving on the highway thinking about running into a tree. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a thought of suicide. And why are these numbers so high within veterans? Uh, veterans struggle when we, when we come back into civilian, you know, coming out of, the, uh, out of the military, we try to integrate back into the system and their purpose is gone. They've been serving for the past four to eight, 12, 20 years, and they've had a purpose, they've had a job, they've had a mission. They get out, okay, now what do I do? How am I supposed to support my family? How am I supposed to do this? Uh, there's, uh, it's like a lot of grief. I mean, you leave your brothers behind. You leave mm -hmm. your brothers and sisters either still on the battlefield or when you exit, they're still serving and you start getting that sense of, uh, you know, almost a, a loss of survivor's purpose. guilt, so okay. to speak. You know, there's a loss of purpose. You're feeling guilty, you're not there helping them. You're not feeling, you know. It's, it's, it comes to your second, almost your first family when you're serving with these people because you're going through so much stuff together. Uh, so when you get out, there's a lot of, uh, what am I supposed to do, you know? So they'll start drinking, start smoking weed, they'll start doing whatever, just to kind of kill those thoughts, those urges. They're very those, prone to these kinds a, a of things. A lot of self-medicating. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they'll do it without even realizing they're doing it. You know, uh, you know back when I was younger, I used to say I'm a social drinker. But in reality, I was a drinking to be social, mm -hmm. you know, so it's kind of like, let's, let's pre-drink before we hit the bar kind of mm, thing, you know, and, okay. and looking back on it, it was, that wasn't, it's that's a slippery not slope. It's, it's yeah. a, yeah, very slippery slope. And if you run into the wrong group of guys or the wrong group of people that kind of keep you going that direction, yeah. and then you're sitting on the side of the street holding a sign and struggling to get back into society. Well, Oscar, before you go, can you remind people out there where they can go to you to reach help? What's the number that they can go to if they're uh, feeling stuck in that dark place? We're at place? the Crossroads Area Veterans Center. Uh, my program is the Military Veteran Peer Network. Uh, I would like to say I'm here to walk a journey with you. Whatever the case may be, we, uh, we help veterans with anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, from utilities to rent to, to substance use to just whatever the case may be, there, there's something for everybody there. Uh, we work if, on donations, or, mm -hmm. you know, we're not able to help anybody, nobody donates to us, so you know, I ask that if anybody can come out and donate and help the cause, it goes directly to veterans, 100%. Yeah. Uh, American Legion, Warriors Weekend are two of our biggest contributors. The help is out there. And without them, we wouldn't be able to do anything yeah. that we do. Well, so. Oscar, thank you so much for your time and the work you're doing, it's incredibly impactful in our community. Appreciate right. your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And for you, everyone at home watching, do not go anywhere because we have more Community Crossroads up next.